How's it going guys? My name's Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to be making an intro, a bridge, and an outro based around a rhythm drop. <laughs> Now, when people are talking about rhythm, usually when they're doing tutorials and, you know, explanations of it, they are referring to the drop. They're referring to the drop elements and, you know, mixing and organizing of the drop, which is very handy because it's the most important part of a rhythm track. But amongst most genres of dubstep and a lot of other electronic genres, they rarely cover uh, intros and buildups and bridges and all the other in-between stuff, mainly because, man, there's not a science to that. It's not a very specific way that everyone does things everybody likes to do theirs like completely different but I'm going to show you how I would do mine based around this little drop that I have here now this is not a terribly complex drop mainly just because I have like loops in here I'm using loops because we at ghost hack are under construction with a new rhythm pack it's going to be twice the size of rhythm essentials 2020 and it's going to be significantly more awesome I can't say too much about it right now but I just took uh, some drum loops and a uh, bass loop from there I took some sound effects, you got a crash and some drum fills and stuff. So it's a little lackluster on my part, but for the video, we're talking about the intro, the buildup and all the other stuff. We're not talking about the drop. So this is what we have to work with. Now that drop isn't much like classic rhythm, it's more of a mix of sort of modern rhythm with bro step, you know, any, any kind of thing you'd hear on Disciple or other labels like that. But I want to just use this drop as both the first and second drop, and then I want to make the intro, the build up, the bridge, and the outro between each of the, each of the drops. Now for this video, the organization is not going to be terribly complex, I'm not really going to use verses per se that I would normally use in like a dubstep track, I'm just going to start with the intro. After eight bars of the intro, it's going to go right to the build. Then from the build, it goes right all the way through drop one, which is basically double the drop that I just played for you. And then we'll have a breakdown for eight bars. And then it's going to go into build up two. And then it's going to be drop two, which normally would be a good bit different from drop one. But in this situation, we're not focused on the drops. We're just focused on everything else. So I have just the same drop again for 16 bars. And then we have an eight bar breakdown. Uh, breakdown number two and then we have the outro and then the track will end right there so if you have sort of bridges and like verses you want to add you know if you want to have a part that plays like a main melody or maybe you have some vocal coming in or something like that then that's perfectly doable but for this case i'm just gonna have a short rhythm track around two minutes and 20 seconds so let's start with this intro. I know I kind of want to start off with an impact. I think that's a pretty good way of starting off tracks. It kind of gets the listener's attention right off the bat. Uh, this uh, impact, however, is kind of faded out. Like it just stops right there and I don't really want that. So let's make this unique and then basically revert it back to its original, its original thing here. The next thing I'm going to take is a hi-hat and this can be literally any hi-hat. I'm just gonna grab some hi-hat. This is just from the East Coast hip, hip hop kit. I'm just gonna take this one. There's really uh, no logic as to what hi-hat you pick other than it just being short. I can center the pan and then I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb, a little bit of reverb. And you know what, I'm just gonna feed this through the rest of the build up too because it's a good way to just sort of keep the rhythm without making anything too heavy. And the next thing we'll need to know in order to start making like instruments to actually play here is what key the track's in. Now this uh, drop is in the key of F. It's hard to tell from these basses. So I've made it a little more apparent with little things like this choir rise. And then you have this brass hit that by itself sounds pretty lame, but it's been stretched out to kind of fit the bass. Like that, that's how it's supposed to mix. But we are in the key of F, and hearing that little choir riser, I actually really like that, just that little choir rise, and I think I'm going to use it. So let's uh, make this unique, because it seems like this was kind of stretched around and, and moved around a little bit. Let's uh, adjust this in, there we go. And now we can bring it back to its original its original length. And then we can go into like maybe another sort of impact, maybe this one, maybe a different one. Thank you. 
And that makes me want to use another uh, another brass hit. So if we go into the orchestral essentials by Ghost Hack, they should have some one shots. Uh, harp for uh, we got horns. Is horns what I'm looking for? That one is pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to take this, and then drop that in there, and that's in A minor. We need it to be an F. So let me just pitch this down four, if my music theory is correct. So after we EQ this guy a little bit, we can add some reverb, and then we can just turn it down to be in the background. Actually, I also want to filter this, so let's go right here and just create a filter shape. And I want to start it out like that. So we can uh, create this automation clip. And yay, it's the size of the whole project. I have a bad habit of doing that. And now we can take this guy and slowly bring him up like that. What I think I want to do here is use the choir riser thing again, except on this first area, I want to trim it a little bit. It's coming in a little too strong. Yeah, it's a little bit better. It's a little more subtle. All right, now over this kind of ambience and a little bit of rhythm, I want to add some sort of melody. And I want it to be kind of dissonant, it may be a little like broken sounding, sort of horror-esque. So I'm gonna lay down pattern three here and I have this piano open. And it's just a little piano preset that we have here in Addictive Keys called uh, Prepared Horror. And I feel like I can do something interesting with that because it is sort of dark and I feel like I can make use of that. I don't think I want it to be this sort of obvious and generic. Even though it doesn't sound bad, I want it to be more unique. So I like it kind of falling down. But I want to save that bit for kind of the end here, and I want to fill in this area with something else. Oh yeah, that sounds really good. And now let's change this up here. What if I just brought, uh, made it like a chord, like up a fifth here? Yeah, that's interesting. I like the piano sitting there as like something, some cool sort of effect. It's not a piano that you hear, hear every day. And now I wanna route this one into 12 and then obviously cut this low end because there is low end for days. But there's also something we have to make sure of. We have to make sure that it is still in their brain an electronic track, that it isn't uh, all just like an orchestra thing, sort of horror sound effects movie. So I wanna make sure there's like digital, a digital side to this, and that maybe from adding some sort of effect to the piano, such as like a bit crusher. which I think that doesn't sound half bad, or we could add some other instruments in there that are actually like synths, you know what I'm saying? That I could use synths for. And I think what I'm gonna do to take care of that, uh, that synth part as well is I'm going to make some kind of arp. However, I'm gonna make it very atonal. I want this to be mainly just a tonal arp, and I'll probably mess it up with like bit crushing and distortion and stuff like that. So it's more like percussion. There it is. So now that we've created this kind of ridiculous little background synth, we're gonna lay it right here and see how this sounds. It sounds ridiculous, but not as ridiculous as I thought it would. I kind of like the way it blends in with everything else. It's like the same, but it's still harsh and digital. So let's route this guy into 13, and let's use this low pass here that we have already on the channel. Let's create an automation clip for that. Oh, I went ahead and made it the size of my whole project again. That's gonna give me a headache for the rest of the project, but now that it's the right size, I can sort of fade it in.
The next thing I want to do is add just some more sound effects to this general area, which I can probably find in tension cinematic sound effects. I'm sure there'll be plenty of good stuff in here. See, they got a lot of atonal drones. I think I'm going to take Abyss. And then I'm going to EQ a lot of the low end out. Let's just take out this low end. Then I'll take this spot and kind of loop it around the rest. And uh, now let's just turn this guy down a little bit. Let's also make sure that we're on crossfade so they don't have any clicks and pops. And what I'm gonna do here for this buildup is I'm gonna duplicate uh, duplicate those weird plucks. I'm gonna take just the uh, bottom pattern of the piano. The hi-hats are gonna continue. I'm gonna take these impacts, the horn stabs and the choirs, sure. I probably won't use this choir right there. And uh, these can also continue. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually take this bass pattern right here. And I'm going to make it unique and I'm going to run it through a different channel. And in this channel, I will be cutting the sub and I will be rolling off the high end. Before that, however, I will be adding a little bit of crushing, a little bit of bit crushing here. So it just sounds a little more broken. And now let's kind of EQ out the harsh spots. So now I have this EQ here, which I'm just doing some stuff I like to take out spots and I'm rolling off the low end and the high end. But I also have this, and it's not actually a low pass, it's actually a shelf that I'm just bringing down, so I can start off down here. And I can raise it up like that. So I'll start us off right here, and I'll create an automation clip, and I made it the whole size of my project again. But now let's just slowly raise this up to the top and sort of keep this going in the background. And then there's the full one. So we're gonna stop it about here. And actually there is some other filtering I wanna do here. I do wanna make like a subtle, a more subtle uh, low pass like this, and then just bring this up here. And I do want this to kind of follow that pattern as well. I know it seemed like I was trying to avoid doing that, but I'm actually gonna do it. I think it's gonna sound good. So now I'm just gonna link it to this controller. Uh, this is gonna be band seven frequency right here. there we are we have a weak little bass build up which is good now we can add just a touch of reverb and this is where you can take advantage of the early reflections and then at the end of this little section we'd have some kind of fills you know different thing going on so we would take out these uh these things right here i'm actually going to take out this one before And this drone would definitely come out. I actually want this drone to fade out as we go because it's too ambient. And then the drop we have isn't actually that ambient. So let's take this uh, this right here. And maybe we can use the high pass. This time I'm not going to make it the whole size of my project. Now it's just going to be a normal automation clip. And let's go like this. It doesn't even have to be that drastic. Yeah, it won't, it won't start its little climb until maybe about here. <laughs> Yeah, sure, that'll be all right. And now what I'm gonna do is take uh, this brass automation right here, and I'm going to find the automation clip, just a spot in the automation clip that I want to hit right here. Because I want this guy to kind of go lower down than normal. So now I'm gonna add some build up drums. And what I wanna do for this is I wanna go into Rhythm Essentials 2020, and I'm gonna get a kick, not too strong of a kick. A lot of these kicks are really strong. I'm gonna take this one, and now I'm gonna grab some kind of clap. I'm gonna take this clap, and then I'm going to use that. Especially if I fade out the kick, the loop and the drop sounds a lot more impactful. Then once we get to about here, the kick can double time. 
And then obviously we're in 6.8, so let's make this little bump like that. So I'm gonna definitely low pass and high pass the kick. Like that, and then I can automate the high pass up. So let me make sure I have the area selected that I want to select, which is going to be this area right there. And now I need to go into the EQ and then automate this uh, high pass. So we can come up and do some of this action. And then maybe I can have it fade in a little quicker. Yeah, like that. And now we're gonna do similar things to the clap. Like first of all, it's gonna be a lot less stereo. Actually, no, I'll probably leave it the same amount of stereo, but I wanna go into uh, Patcher and add some reverb through this little preset I made uh, called EQ the Verb. And this is really simple. I have the dry signal going out, just 100% dry. Then I have another signal going through an EQ, which is drastically EQing it here. It's kind of in a clappy shape. And then it's going through a reverb with the dry all the way down so you just get a little bit of the wet. Like if I were to take away this dry signal, you're only getting reverb, right? So now I'm able to EQ my own reverb and just EQ it however I want. All right, I realize now that I actually do want a good amount of low end on the kick uh, up until it really starts building. So I'm gonna paste that there. Yeah, that's more acceptable. The next thing we want to do is add some sound effects. So let's go into the sound effects and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a sub drop. Sub drop is very helpful. And I'm just gonna put this sub drop right at the beginning of our breakdown here, or of our build up. And I'll definitely use that again, but for right now I need some kind of riser. And I'm gonna use this riser called Ringling here. And I'm going to, uh, it's a sort of a ring modulated, like sine wave sound. It's a really interesting riser, but I'm going to use this and it's gonna take up a good amount of space in this mix. So first off, I'm definitely gonna roll off the low end here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit background, maybe a touch of reverb. Now normally what I would do is kind of trim this back part so the riser starts right as the build starts. But I don't think I actually want that. I like how this sounds starting a little bit early. Like that, it adds some nice character. And the riser itself is not that loud, it doesn't have to be. So I think that would be just fine there. But the next thing we need, we have kind of a, uh, kind of a unique riser, a riser that adds character to the build, but I also want to add some kind of just like noise. Let's see, so I can take this guy and then I can uh, reverse him and just use that as the white noise riser. It gets kind of intense up at the top. I don't know if I want to use uh, the sample all the way up to there, maybe just part of the way. Another thing I want to do is take this crash that I use in the drop. It's not a complicated crash, it's just a simple just normal crash. And I wanna use it in this intro or in this build up too. So I'm going to make it unique. And then uh, I want to go into here and use the Mod X. And just use that, it's a very subtle low pass. Another thing I'm gonna take from the drop is this little sort of liquid downlifter. For the first hit, I'm just gonna start it right here. Not all the way at the top, but when it comes to the build, I'm gonna start it all the way at the top. I actually think I'm gonna change the hi-hat out for something a little more high frequency, like that. All right, now I have to put something in this uh, middle section before the drop, so I have an impact, and then I have this little reverse clap going into the drop. 
And I could get fancy with like vocal chops and like sound effects and like all kinds of other stuff here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of the vocals from the ultimate vocal shots pack. Uh, this one is one of the phrases. It sounds like this. Kick this. Which is yours truly. And I put a bunch of effects on it. And it just it's just going to sit right here. Kick this. It could be more interesting and it could grab you a little more, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to use that and it doesn't mix in too bad. So now that we've done the intro and the buildup, uh, the rest of the track is really just a, a mixture of the kind of things that we have now. Normally, at least in most tracks, I wouldn't add like a ton of variation from that in between. Some people do, but that's just a taste. And we're going to take the elements that we have here and we're going to use them in the breakdown and the buildup part two. So we know we're going to have an impact. We know we're going to have like a brass hit here. Uh, definitely a sub drop right after the drop is happening. Yeah, we're going to have the little liquid and watery sound going on right there. And we definitely have the piano going. We have the crash cymbal hitting. And I'm going to have the uh, little weird pluck build up again right here. And then I'm also going to bring in, uh, bring in this abyss sort of atonal pad. So this is two clicks away from the intro we have here, but I did a couple things differently. I'm not fading in the horns. They're starting right off. I'm starting off big with like a sub drop and the impacts and everything like that. And I'm also not bringing in the hi-hat. However, I do want to bring in the hi-hat for a little bit here. Like, let's just take all of this and then uh, duplicate it right here. I do want the hi-hat going, but I'm going to filter it in, which means it's not really going to be audible until like the last little bit. So I'm going to take this. Or maybe I won't filter it. I think what I want to do is take the dry signal from this reverb and I'm going to fade that in. So let's create an automation clip and now let's fade in the dry signal. It can start its kind of fade in journey right there. And then I'm going to go into the buildup, but I'm going to try to make a few changes just to add variation. And everything that I'm showing you right now is really, it's not a particular complex way to structure a song. Like this isn't particularly complicated. It's pretty dang simple. You can get really complicated, but there's not really a good way to show how everyone does that because everyone gets complicated differently when it comes to their intros and stuff like that. This is just if you wanted the essentials of like an intro and a breakdown and a buildup and all those other things things together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this drum loop and kind of create a little bit more of a groove. Then I'm going to change up this build a little bit here. And then this is going to be a bit different. Then at this end bit, we're going to go even faster. I just want to make any kind of variation that'll make it more interesting. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take the bubbly downshifter. I'm going to make it unique, and then I'm going to reverse it like this. And now we can uh, bring this right here. Kick this. And now that's just an extra like Foley effect happening to make it more, just a little more intense right there. And here's the next part where the buildup would be different. This is actually a significant thing that I can't do in this video right now, but that's, uh, you see how I took the drop loop from the drop that I had? and I used that as kind of a buildup, that's what you would do for your second drop as well. Like you'd have a second drop that is hopefully different than the first drop in some way. You know what I'm saying? You'd make changes, you'd make it different. And then you'd use that as the buildup, which is also gonna add a very different texture. And what I did for this, uh, for this little fill here is I just took this little vocal. Oh my God. Just right there. And then I added some crushing to this little bit. 
So you may think this sounds kind of cheesy. It doesn't not sound cheesy, but this is just what I'm using as a placeholder. Like you can obviously get more in depth and kind of judge your pre-drop vocal or drum fill or whatever you're doing right before the drop based on the drop that you have. That's going to be a very important thing because not all not all drum fills or vocals will work with every single drop. It's very specific. So that's just what I have as a variation to fill its place. And now we're just left with the breakdown and the outro. The big breakdown and the outro aren't that difficult. What I usually do for this is just what I personally do is I take the drums from the drop and then I'll kind of do some stuff to sort of low pass them, make them a little less strong. Like in the kick, perhaps I'll take an EQ before this wave shaper. And And I'll just take it down to about there. So like, let me create an automation clip. And I created it the size of my whole project again. And then after the first kick, just bring it down right here. And similar thing for the snare. Not as drastic, but it's gonna follow the same pattern. So let's just link it to the same controller. And I'm going to add the other stuff. We have the crash. We have kind of the juicy sort of fall down right there. We have the same sort of drum fills, but I'm going to take this a little bit and I'm going to put it right there. And now I can take our instruments and I can lay them on that spot. So let's move some things around. Let's take this uh, let's take this sort of ambience right here. Let's take the choirs, brass hits right there. We have the impact. And we can't forget our fun little uh, atonal arp right here. So let's just put that there. That's gonna come in right after this. Yeah, I like that. And at this point, what I would do is take the sub that's playing uh, beneath these basses. And then I'd lay it down right here, but unfortunately we don't have that. So I'm just gonna have to take, uh, take this file, make it unique and cut everything but the sub. So I'm just gonna edit it in audio editor. I'm gonna go like this and then I'm, I can, you can see where the sub frequencies are. And then I'm just going to cut like that. It's a harsh thing to do, but it uh, gets the job done. So now that I have the sub, I can drag it right there. And now we have the sub. But I'm gonna cut this first bit, then I'm gonna normalize the rest. And now the outro is really simple. We just have the melody going like this, and I'll probably cut up the melody to make it a little more simple. So it's, does it's main pattern right there, and then it goes into this one. And then it just uh, lets go. Right there, which is kind of a satisfying end. And then we're gonna have our little bubble down. We're gonna have the impact. We're gonna have the sub bass drop right there. We're gonna have our ambience hitting as well. and then it cuts out and that's the end. Also as a last little effect, I want to add this guy. It's a very low, very ominous impact and I'm just gonna add it on that one hit of the piano at the very end. All right, so now since the drops are pretty much the same thing on each half of the drop, I'm just going to delete uh, the second half of each one. It's just gonna get deleted and I'm gonna scoot everything inward so I can play the whole track for you. 
So as you're listening, keep in mind that the mix isn't beautiful. This is just something I did just right now. And also the drops may be kind of repetitive since I didn't change them, as well as the song just kind of being shorter in general because I'm not making verses or, and I'm not making super long drops either. I'm just focusing on the other stuff. So just, so just pay attention to how all the transitions flow together and, and how everything kind of locks together through each of these pieces that are labeled. <laughs> So there we go, that's how I would kind of design a basic sort of bare bones, like intro and build up and break down and outro and all the in-between stuff for a rhythm track. Now you obviously can get a lot more detail this, than this, you can add more interesting stuff, you can make more variations, you can make it less repetitive. That main sort of uh, melody played by the you know broken kind of piano sound does get repetitive after a while. Maybe that's because the drops aren't very interesting and they don't last very long, who's to say? But I definitely have the bare bones and like the bare essential down of what I would need in order to release a track that all kind of works together and it isn't, and it isn't just a drop. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing. <laughs> <laughs>